Look at the ice. That's crazy. Okay, Joe, what happened? Oh! No, 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 no! Well, good morning, ladies and gents. We are back for another one. March 20th and snow event 19 is here, guys. Yesterday on snow event 18, I, I definitely was anticipated to possibly go out, but uh, it, uh, it came a little bit stronger than I imagined. So we got a healthy 10 centimeters of snow on the ground. It's currently minus, I'd say about eight to 10. So temperatures have gotten a little bit colder. Let me tell you, there's quite a bit of drifts around the city we had some good lake effect come throughout the city from last night and uh we're gonna be dispatching for 11 a.m again at this time of the season the snow always typically comes a little bit later throughout the night so the day dispatches are more frequent of course we were dispatched and ready to go for 7 a.m however we decided to push it to 11 because we still have a huge cloud over our head on the radar and it looks like it's still gonna snow for the next few hours so we're gonna give uh, the snow another few more hours to accumulate and uh we might have to do all of our customers driveways today just with a little bit of snow we got yesterday and the decent amount we got throughout the night for today you know there's a, there's a good 10 to 15 centimeters in a lot of the gravel customers driveways and uh, i know we are a little bit worried about the base but things are a bit colder so everything should be nice and hardened and locked up now so i think we're not 100% sure on the call yet. We're gonna wait a little bit longer to see if we get a little bit more snow. Another inch would do the trick, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna be uh, servicing uh, gravel customers as well. We might be short a couple operators today. On yesterday's snow event, I mentioned that we'd be like six to eight operators short and every single operator came in besides like two. So we were really successful on snow event 18 yesterday. I forgot to put that in uh, the end of the video to let everybody know that uh, we did extremely well with having all of our operators come in, especially on kind of short notice so that was amazing for today though just because we let a couple guys go yesterday i think we might be like two to three machines short i'm thinking maybe about two machines short max or we might have them all out on the road we'll see might call in a few spares and see what we could do however you know what at the end of the season it's a day pass we'll manage to get everything done even with gravel driveways i'd, I'd assume between five to six hours even being short-handed so it's light work regardless uh we don't need a, a pile of guys we'll make out just fine so I have one of the tractors started behind me here. Nick fired that up. I'm gonna hop in there and start getting the parking lot done here quick. And uh, we are gonna have Eric, Andreas, and Mitchell show up to the shop any moment here. They'll probably be here around 8 a.m. We're gonna get these rigs fired up, ready, warmed up, get these uh, employees in one by one, hopefully crank all driveways. I'd love to provide value to my gravel customers, of course, and get them a little bit of money's worth going out to service them. So fingers crossed, we get to do the entire city today. And of course, as always guys i'll make sure i get some drone footage for you i will make sure i get some in the cab footage for you as well as out of the cab footage on my dji pocket three here that i got in my hand so you get some great clips of blowing snow for you guys and you know the little bit of surprise snow the past couple days i'll take it with a grain of salt it's uh it's good to see it was a light winter you know this is my passion and I love this business so much and this year just felt very different, you know, not having a typical snow year across all of Canada, I guess. It wasn't just us here in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. You know, it, was, it made for a weird season, you know, business was great, of course, it was incredible. However, just the infrequency of going out, it, it felt different, you know, and I could say that I kind of liked it at moments, but for a lot of moments, I, I definitely disliked it. However, we're here, end of the season, March 20th, and we're going to go crank the entire city City. fingers crossed for all of our customers i'm excited guys snow event 19 as you know i think we might make 20 we'll see i guess you guys will just have to stay tuned i just wanted to apologize about that last clip i had my nose leaking a little bit i mean we're all human so i'm not really embarrassed but i just wanted to apologize i'm a little bit under the weather and i didn't even feel it leaking but like i said we're human and honestly i don't give a but I wanted to come on to show you guys the snow we had because all I did was babble my mouth in front of the camera and didn't get to show you our accumulation and all the rigs sleeping before they get started here. So hold on. Now the parking lot was clean before last night, but you could see all the drifts around the tank and stuff. And there's about a solid three inches on the ground here 
drifts have up to about 10 centimeters around the brims of the machines. But in some areas, we definitely got 10 centimeters flat on the ground. But like I said, there's drifts. East side of the city's probably got seven and a half. But you know what? We'll call this a 10 centimeter snowfall because we're anticipating to get a little bit more. So number 19 guys, 10 CM. I'm gonna hop in the big old John Deere 6110M. This might be my last time using it because I got some people interested in coming to buy all these tractors. So fingers crossed for me, guys. We going all orange, baby. Woo! So I'm gonna hop in this rig, clean up the parking lot and see where I end up after that. Guys, stay tuned and I'll catch you soon. Quick update for everybody. I got the John Deere 6110M tractor number four right behind me here. Spent quite a bit of hours in this machine last year, let me tell you. Anyhow, it is 9 a.m. And I know I told you guys a little bit earlier that there was a large cloud up above our heads and uh, we were expected to get a little bit more snow before I dispatch at 11. Well, that's not the case because the sun's out and there's no signs of snow anywhere in the air at all. So I'm gonna head out in tractor number four right now, help Nick out on Central 12. And uh, we're gonna go bang out a little bit of this route before everybody gets in for 11 a.m. See if we can maybe complete it. I don't know. We got two hours before everybody gets here. So we'll see what happens. So got the fuel cans ready. Andreas right behind me here. He's gonna clean off the windows on my machine because they're quite dirty from yesterday. Driving on the roads, eh? It was quite, uh, quite warm yesterday. So all the tractors are just filthy, especially on the windows. But anyhow, dispatch two hours away. I'm gonna go hop on this road, pick up some production, hopefully get it done with Nick. And then we're gonna be uh, having the crew roll out of here for 11 sharp and go crush this snow event, guys. Well, we uh, just made a quick pivot. Came to talk to Mitch and uh, it looks like we are just gonna send the whole team out early. We were a little bit concerned about doing that just because some guys may come in in the next 30 minutes when other guys are gonna come in an hour and a half to two hours closer to our official dispatch time. So some guys might end up staying a little bit later, but you know what? The real troops come early anyways. And I know they, don't, they won't mind staying a few extra hours than the other guys. So yeah, let's just get everybody in right now, Mitch. We might as well the the cloud is over us and radar looks clear so let's get all the guys in and send alerts out and just start early okay why not it's gonna be a shorter day so it's kind of sent you over here late right yeah out of here earlier so yeah the only issue i have with that is organizing the alerts but i'll get that all situated well you're just gonna have to po post up in the garage with the macbook and just as guys come in one by one by one, right? Yeah, well, I'm gonna try and send them before the guys even come in so when they get here, they can just roll in. Even better, thing. even better. That's just gonna take a little bit of time. Should I still go hop on this route and help old Nick for a bit, or should I just... Right there, yeah. Okay, let me know when I need to come back when John's on his way, because that guy will be like one of the first guys here. He has to pick up a bunch of people, so he probably won't. Probably another 45 minutes. At least. Yeah. That's why I'm not too, too concerned about you taking the tractor right now. I was gonna say something, but you're good for now. And then we're gonna do this the old, uh, old style, you know? Yeah, we're not using the other garage, sadly, because all of our uh, lawns equipment's in there. So we're uh, resorting to using our repairs and maintenance shop, which is uh, not too ideal, but we made it work. Got this nice little black beer pong table. There's our dispatch uh, action plan for the snow event. Typically we have that on the TV, but looks like we're gonna have to uh, have it on paper for today. We did that yesterday as well. You're gonna tape one up to the garage as well. The garage door, eh? Yeah. Oh, there's yesterday's from March 19th. Yeah, there's yesterday's. We can take that down. So guys, there you have it. That's the quick little game plan pivot there. Like I said, the clouds over us now. It doesn't call for any snow. The sun's out. And you know what? We might as well start the snow event early. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm still gonna hop in the tractor for a bit until uh, John, who is the operator for this machine, lets us know he's on his way, then I'll come back. Central 12's right around the corner from the shop anyway, so I'm gonna go start banging some laneways with Nick. And I just remembered, probably grab my GoPro, get some in the cab footage for you guys. Well guys, we in the 6110M cruising, baby. Check it out. I told you that sun came out, guys. Check it out. Slight overcast, but it's a gorgeous, gorgeous morning. I can't complain. You know, it blows my mind to see that we got this little bit of snow the past couple days when about two weeks to a week ago, it was like plus 10, plus 15 degrees. I was, I was outside in my shorts smoking a cigar and here we are now, minus 10 with 
10 centimeters of snow and we're blowing snow out here. Just crazy to be up here in uh, Ontario, Sault Ste. Marie in the north. We really get the four seasons, let me tell you. Not that much snow. This is a petty little snowfall, but just it's just crazy. The weather is very unpredictable here. Anyways, guys, I'm just rolling on the Fox Road Trail here. We got a pile of customers on this road. There's a guy blowing snow. Poor you, should have signed up for the service. So I'm just rolling up on Nick right now. I can see him from down here. So let's see if we can get this route done. There's a guy. There's tractor number four, my 6110M. Nick's in the 6110M behind me here, tractor number five. We're out here blowing snow, guys. There's a pedestrian. Hey, how you doing? She's chilly out. Boy, oh boy, am I ever gonna miss these tractors. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna go start smacking some laneways here. She's getting cold outside here. What's going on guys? Quick update for you. Sun is shining. We got a bluebird on our hands, which absolutely feels great. But might I say, is it ever fucking cold outside? We got some of the tractors started behind me here. And then we also have some tractors that are completely gone from the yard. So we made a quick pivot. Like I said earlier, we didn't dispatch for 11. We said, you know what? The cloud's over us. Let's call all the guys in and get them here earlier if we can. And you know what? It's worked out quite well. We have, I'd say, close to about 30 to 40% of our fleet out of the yard. And I'm sure we'll have the rest of the guys here within the next 30 minutes to an hour, just before 10, 30, 11. And uh, we'll have this whole fleet ready, out on the road, cranking driveways, notifications on. We're doing a full pass today gravel customers and hard top customers so we are completing all 33 driveways and uh god bless the day out right now man god bless i just wanted to show you guys something real quick because it's really important to me and uh i thought i'd just share it with you so right here on my john deere 6110m so this tractor and plenty other tractors that i have we modified a tree spade shovel onto the blower here so that when you clog your chute in here, you could clean it out, right? Now, we also have half of our fleet with these ice picks. We bought these from another blower manufacturer company, and might I say these are a world of a difference. Much, much better than the tree spade shovel. Like I said, we have half of our fleet with these ice picks fabricated to the blower, and like I said, they are a world of a difference. Much, much better than the tree spade shovels. So what I'm gonna mention to my shop manager, Eric, is that, you know, over the summer, I wanna take all these tree spade shovels out here, throw them all in the garbage because they're way too big, way too flimsy, and they're just not small and nimble like these nice ice picks. These ice picks are really good. They're able to get right inside the throat of the chute, like so and really break up the snow when you got some horrible clogging going on inside the throat of your blower. So guys, if you can, try and get your hands on these and don't buy some lousy tree spade shovels. They suck. So I thought I'd share that with you guys, but besides that, we got tractors all around me here. 
getting ready, putting their jerry can on the tractor, and we're heading out here to complete laneways. Guys, I'll catch you in a bit. I'm gonna go toss the drone up here on the route soon. I got some in the cab footage going down for you guys too, and I'll update you with anything special. But so far, so good. For a brand new machine, that thing has a lot of problems. Like every second snow event, this thing has problems. Close the door. We'll have to ask Eric what's going on here. Turn it off. What's going on with it? Something uh, with the fuel. I already called the dealer and they told me that uh, it's something related to the fuel. So I'm gonna check the floater right now and I'm gonna also check the, the filter. So, well, I'm gonna check the floater first. If I see water in there, I'm just gonna drain it. Otherwise, I will have to change the filter and also do that, right? But I'm gonna warm it up for uh, 30 minutes. Uh, Man, this tractor gives us nothing but problems. It's only one year old. Yeah. How many hours? Uh, you cannot even see it right now, but it's like like 400 hours right now. Man, every second snow shift, this thing has got fucking issues. Yeah. This is why we're going all Kubota, eh? <laughs> Man, that's why. Yeah. And people see windshields us. itself. The heated windshields themselves are going to be a game changer. Like, yeah. I, I can even see through my window most of the time. I know. The John Deere's are like, they run well, but they're not. You know what? I like the speed. I like the power, yeah. but that's about Don't it. Don't listen to me because I can be like... Bias. Bias because of the fucking... I, I drove the fucking Kubota before. He's been driving this I piece of shit deer. for two years. You've, oh, you've, I grew up deer. Nothing runs like a deer, but they're inconvenient as yeah they're so hard to fix and they have so many problems kubotas do last a lot longer for sure in the compact sure. world that's for damn sure <laughs> yeah for sure for sure and the big machine is like 61 10m beautiful machine. john deere blows kubota out of the water for the big tractors <laughs> for sure, yeah, there is good. there is there is not to talk about it like it's not, not a debate it's not it's even not a debate a but, but when we are talking about these compact tractors john deere didn't figure it out yet it's no. beautiful this machine is beautiful but that's all. The only yeah, thing. Sure. It just looks for nice, sure. eh? John Deere makes great large equipment, but these small machines, they don't put no time and effort no. into them. They just slap their green and yellow paint. And exactly. They call, like a deer. F off. They call it a day. Sure. What a desk. Yeah. You gonna drink You gonna drink yeah. some uh, 040 mobile oil on the side there? Or what? Stefan, what's up, brother? I, it's cold, eh? Oh. oh, there we go, guys. More and more machines leaving the yard here. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Basically a little over half the fleet out of the yard now, so God bless. That's all water, eh? Look at the ice. Ooh, wow. Grab that. That's straight ice. That's ice. Wow. And that's why when I took the plug off, it didn't come anything. Look. There's all the ice in there. It's all the ice in there. So that's straight water? Is that water mixed with fuel? It's straight water. Just fuel straight will, water. Fuel will not... Uh, it's it's like uh, the catcher for it, eh? Yeah. So that none gets into the engine block? That's what this is for, yes. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. That's probably why it was beeping. <laughs> it's gelled up. Yeah. Look at the Holy ice. That's crazy. <laughs> the ring, the ring's <laughs> even in there. Yeah. Frozen. That's nuts, dude. I've never even seen that. Wow. There it is. That's a <laughs> holy. Sh you can put a hockey with that. I got hockey puck. That's <laughs> fucked up. But this is the way you should look. Yeah, yeah. And this is how much water was in there from condensation and everything because the machines were just sitting outside for a, for a few days, right? Hot, for cold, a month. hot, hot cold, hot cold, yeah, hot cold. Yeah, yeah, so of, of course this this can happen, right? But why do we only have this problem with those, these uh, green machines? I don't even want to say the brand. They are green. I don't know if you guys know about this. But <laughs> this one in particular, though, like his yeah. tracker. I don't know why. Every green, 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 every time also. it goes from hot to cold, that thing always gels up. And now yeah. if I need this, I gotta just have it here in the yeah. Melt it. Hot water until it melts. There it is, there it is. Ta-da! Okay, you think if uh, that quick. we put it all back together, you think uh, it'll be good to go? 
Uh, it will not be uh, like. Or it might be in the fuel lines. Just too. a little bit. Yes, it yeah. can be a little bit in the fuel lines. So let it warm up for a bit longer. Just gonna leave it uh, warming up for a little bit more, but at least we. I can't believe that. That was crazy. Yeah, I never. I've honestly never seen that much in there. Usually no. it's just a little Did you bit. See it? Like, no, I didn't. You'll see it in the video. Yeah, you'll see it in the video. It was like this. Well, that's step one, anyhow. Okay, Eric, and just throw her back together and. Yeah. We'll try starting her up after. Well, and but now I'm afraid in the other filter, in the main filter, um, which is in there, it will have the same problem. So I will need to change that filter and it is where it is, right? Yep. Oh man, and we're getting prepped for our new company. Holy f It's like uh, an episode of Hoarders up here. This is assembly. Look how nice these uh, Ram racks. Well, it's called an Extreme Pro Series Radio Racks. Uh, that part works. We'll have some videos out for you guys of that. That's for our Northern Lawns company. Those are the trimmer racks for the box side of the truck. I can't believe how nice those come. Wow, that's insane. Anyways, to the parts store. So we have it here, 4066R, 5115R, because we used to have this one. And this is for the 6130 and the 6110M. That's the way we have it separated. And Kubota has it on shelf over there. Shelf yeah. in there with another parts from other things. You found All the right. filter? On the filter. Are you just putting a brand new one on because like why not or? Just why not? I have it in here. Yeah. I already changed in all of my machines. These are some spares that are gonna be there sitting for next year practically. So I'm just gonna put it on and make sure this machine is. We're giving all the love to these tractors as we can. Yeah. Look at this man. <laughs> okay, put it, put it on, I'm sick. <laughs> There it goes, there it goes. The fuel? Yeah, just run the lines. Anything, just run the lines a little bit. Clean it all out. This is the best <laughs> invention ever, man. What it's do like, you use it for? The more you crank, the more it grabs, right? So I use it for all the filters that are abused to take out. <laughs> Matco MST4568Z. C, not Z. I got this from, from the US, right? Okay, fire it up. I want to see if that does the trick. <laughs> No lights on the dash? No, she's fucking mint. Sounded mint too. Just the parking brake. I swear it does sound better, eh? Yeah, it does sound better for so, sure. You ready to go crank? Yeah, buddy. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Andre, you want to go for McDonald's after this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, let's get this out of here, Andre. The McGriddles are getting cold. Let's go. Mitch, hit me with an update. <laughs> There's some boys and girls rolling up. Put it here, me toe. Oh, he's a natural. What an operator, eh? Bobbing and weaving. Andreas, did you, did you do this? Andreas! It's okay. We're all allowed accidents, my friend. <laughs> well, we got most of the machines gone now. Like Mitch said, we're waiting for eight to nine more guys to show up. However, um, they're coming in groups of three and four, so we're looking strong right now. Okay, we got one of the boys fueled up on his way out. That's Ryan. Two more machines left in the yard here, and then we have that one farm machine in the back there. That's our M5 111. Something going on with it when the dealership had to split it in a half to uh, fix the clutch that was blown on it. I guess they they may have not put it back together properly because our first shift we brought it out after it was fixed which was yesterday and guy got like maybe five houses done and started having issues i'm not sure what type of issues i didn't really ask eric but i know that it can't be used for the snow event so it is what it is but yeah two more machines to leave the yard and we will have all 35 units out on the road like i said we're down two tractors one's out at north shore and then the other m5 111 there with whatever issues it's got going on. So 35 rigs will be out on the road here in probably the next 20, 30 minutes as we're waiting for those last two guys. They are late. So you guys better clean up your act if you're watching. We barely even worked in the last month and a half. Like, come on. Anyhow, um, I'm gonna go hit the road, get some content with the drone, maybe some outside of the cab footage as well for you guys. So stay tuned and I'll keep you updated if anything else special pops up. Peace. Quick booster juice pit stop or what? Over Just before throwing the drone in the air or what? So it's your, your first time having it? Yeah. You excited? It looks really good, man. Look at the drone in there. Awesome. 
Cheers, brother. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. This is when you know it's been a quiet snow event. When we're able to both get away and have a little booster juice, we're gonna go head down to Central Four. This is the downtown part of the city in Sault Ste. Marie, right near the bridge to the USA. And I've never actually got any content uh, down that way for you guys. So be aware, it is downtown, so it's certainly a bit uh, rougher than uh, some of the other places I've filmed, but I figured, you know what? We've never been to that end of the city. Let's show everybody on YouTube what it looks like down there. So we're gonna go throw the drone up, get some pictures, maybe some out of the cab footage. Hopefully you don't get pushed by a junkie and we'll get some great content for you guys. <laughs> Cheers. There we go. Look at it. Look quick, at it. quick little swap. The Northern Long no, Swan. Look, 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 look. Oh, that means he's hungry. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I don't know, where, where are you going, Irene? Where are you going? Uh, just back up in the shop, I got the Okay. We are firing up the drone, baby. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo 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 -hoo! Hold on, I gotta put the knobs on here. We got the second one. Okay, who, who are we coming to see? What's going on? Where are we? Joe, man. He doesn't know how to take a piece of wood out of the machine. It's not bad. It's nothing wrong, Joe. It's all good. We're gonna do it for you, buddy. Because we love him, eh? Yeah, we love our f***ing operators. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, there's a city! Wow. Okay, Joe, what happened? Let me see what's going on in here. Okay, so first things first, you change your PTO pin, that's great. I already know something's wrong when this I can't get it open. I tried with the bar and everything. Ooh, wee! Check out the fan spins. Oh, it's not dead. It stopped dead, eh? It bent it right there. Yeah, also it's here. Look. Ooh, yeah. You hit something good, so full throttle. Oh, me. Still kind of hitting up against there, eh? Yeah. Yeah, so just uh, okay. do okay. a nice, yeah. nice yeah, yeah. Uh, back down in here, please. And uh, yeah, see you later. See, see you, Joe. Anything, don't call me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just like that. Quick update for you guys. We are back to the shop right now and uh, Eric's got the hose out with the warm water right now, cleaning out Joe's tractor in front of me here. Looks like that fan was giving him some more issues and he wasn't able to turn his PTO on to power the blower to shoot snow. So we're gonna try and get this expedited right now, see what's going on. Eric, what's your intentions? I'm just trying to clean the, the, the shoes right now and it was full of uh, snow because it got caught. Because what is going on is that First of all, snow is too wet and it gets clogged so easily, right? See, it's, yeah. Where's that sticking point? Is it that, that pillar right that there? Yeah, it doesn't have play. You see, it doesn't have play. No, so nothing's bent. It was just a buildup of all those fine rocks. That driveway did a number on it, eh? Holy f Okay, we'll tighten her back up, bring her outside. I, I wanna double check the auger, so let's lift it up I before will, we I take will. it I'm up. I'm gonna wash it off. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll see what's going on in there because something could be restricting the auger too, oh, eh? Sure. I think there's a buildup of gravel in the so chain. Salty. She just needed a good bath, I guess, eh? Oh yeah. Look at that. This is the way you should turn, right? Moves freely. You don't hear any crinkling, crunking, or banging. Yeah. When when you have it up, <clears throat> it will always restrict to a certain point uh, for, because the, the, the video shop is, is in... Uh, yeah, you're right. You'll kind of hear that clicking, eh? Yeah. 
So, what was uh, the resolution on this repair? I think it's just so many little rocks that were in that gravel that he had, that they were actually getting stuck here. Plus, everyone is clogging, brother. I'm sorry to tell you that, but everyone is clogging. You see that guy that uh, in, in, in on Wellington, he was clogging, everyone is clogging, right? Today's been a clogging This day. is just very wet snow, so that's the way it goes, right? You gotta clean it, or you gotta be really careful with your approach, like leave your bunch in there, Start your PTO in here and approach the bunch of snow slowly so it takes time to process it and throw it out. If you have it in there, it just clogs, right? So all I needed was a good bath. Yeah. Just a good, nice so, wash. What happened to your blower? Uh, spray of course. Let's go see what's going on with his now. Oh, yeah. Well, so what broke on this one, Sykes? Where are we looking? Oh, sway bar. Yeah, that's pretty common on these. Sway bar, yeah. I think second one this year. This would be the second one or maybe third. No, it's not bad at all. On to the next, bring the next one in. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh my god, you, did, you would have just seen that? <laughs> there it is, let me see the brake. It hoisted it right up, right? Yeah, exactly. Here, yeah. see how this bent? Yeah. It's almost about to break and this bolt go through and then a knot and that's Easy all fix. How much is that part? Like a hundred dollars? No. No? Less? Oh, very cheap. You're good, Sykes. Bring her in, brother. Oh, guys are starting to get back to the yard here. Always fixing there you know what and there we were in the beginning of the shift having a nice booster juice we <laughs> thought it was going to be a smooth ride today and it kind of was it wasn't too bad. too bad we have had only bad. only one pass that's why true that's one thing for you guys to know you guys will notice that we do break and it's minor things but i have noticed something over the past uh, three seasons that i have been working with um, this company and it is that the longer hour you have your machines running obviously the more more right more problems somehow everything started starts to get sore out and everything starts just breaking more if we have 10 routes we have 12 tractors it's just the best way to do it because yeah. the likelihood of two machines going down for every 10 is high. Super high. As, as you guys have seen in that video, watching us clean out the blower fan there, all that sand, that took the whole machine down. Something so simple, right? So simple, but- Even so this part too, it's so a minor heavy. part. How many spare do you usually keep on hand for those with guys running Kubota? Good to have a handful, it, it will, let's it say. It will be depending on the number of machines you have for sure, right? But uh, normally, at least have one because normally it's one that one guy's gonna break, right? Like if you wanna- This, is the, se this is the second one of the year? The second one of the year. Yeah, right? so that's not bad. It's not bad. But like last year, we were just fixing it and fixing it, and it was. That doesn't. Cool. You need a new one. You, you can't need a do new that. one yeah. for sure, right? Ooh, look at this top bar too. I just noticed she's. <laughs> fucked. Wow, that thing is literally like a half pipe. <laughs> Right, my friend, bring it up, please, so I can uh, swing at the center and then I can put the other thing on. So now they're gonna center it up, that way they can slide their pin through, and the blower sits flush with the back wheels. Push it. Good. Right there. There we go. It's in now. Boom. Okay, Mitch, show me yeah. what we got here. What do we got, eh? Ooh. Those came out fire. Wow, let me see. Close it, that's fire. So those are hitting all the mailboxes in town. March 18th to the 22nd or 23rd, I'm pretty sure. So it'd be literally this entire week, Monday to Friday. Got our nice little new mascot, the Yeti. I think that's pretty cool. Show me the inside again. Super, super cool. Oh, there you guys have it, man. I've been giving everybody sneak peeks through the last two snow events of all the Northern Lawn stuff we're working on because I haven't made like any like Northern Lawns Northern official Lawn videos. Official videos yeah, so yeah. I just been, you know, showing them sneak peeks of like the equipment, the trucks. Now, as you guys can see some of the branding. If you want to see our new website too, go to northernlawns.ca. We made a banger website. Where are we at? What's going on? We basically done or what? Yeah. We are, as far as I'm aware, just see here, 98%, so that's done in a minute, and then 91%, so they just gotta finish up a couple houses, and then that's it. Well guys, four and a half hours, and we cranked all of our driveways across the whole city. 
all 3300. Might I say, at the beginning of the snow event, it seemed like a good idea to do gravel. There's Sean beside me in his big yellow Tonka. That's awesome. As I was saying, at the beginning of the snow event, it seemed like a good idea to do gravel driveways, but kind of near the end of the snow event, as things started melting a little bit, kind of second guessed that uh, decision, but you know what? What's done is done. We've been out for snow events where we've definitely uh, have blown more gravel than today. Very hard time this year finding our base, as I've said in previous videos, but you know what? It is what it is. We're cleaning it all up for our customers anyways. And we're working on a solution right now internally inside of our business where we're gonna be fabricating something to uh pack down these gravel driveways so we aren't constantly always blowing gravel all over the place so uh eric has an idea of coming up with some sort of attachment on the blower that we're going to custom fabricate in house where we're going to be essentially able to pack down driveways that are gravel if they don't have a base yet and then still be able to blow snow as well so kind of having like a multi-purpose tool stay tuned for that guys that's one of our big summer projects this year i got a lot of confidence in him that he'll be able to build something that uh, will do the trick for all of our gravel customers so that could be a big innovation in the industry for anybody else who does clean gravel driveways as well uh, in their city. I know it's not really typical, but for us here in Sault Ste. Marie, like I told you guys before, about 30 to 35% of our customers are gravel driveways, which is absolutely insane. If you want to hear that as a number, that's about 1,100 to 1,200 driveways. Yes, you heard me, 1,100 to 1,200 driveways in our city are gravel, which is just insane to think about. So we have something sweet that we have in mind that we're going to start building and working on this summer and introduce it to all you guys. It definitely won't be for sale as it's just going to be a prototype in our business for next year. However, you never know what the future holds. Besides the point guys, I wanted to hop on and say we absolutely smashed this snow event once again. It's like clockwork to us out here. We got a real grip on things this year. You know, things have never went smoother. I know it's been a light year, but must I say, I'm proud of my entire team internally. We do such a great job together. We've definitely gained some experience over the last couple of years and we just have such a strong team from the operators to the guys internally as well. And I'm just very proud and grateful for it. So that's one thing I could say here while I'm on the camera. Yeah, thumbs up for this snow event. We crushed number 19, guys. Uh, I don't really got too much else to say. You guys seen most of the breakdowns throughout the day here as I tried to film all of them. I did miss a couple as I wasn't able to get the camera out, but it is what it is. They were minor detail anyways. If it was something extravagant, you know I would have got it for you guys on camera because I tried to miss nothing. Anyhow, number 19 is officially done. Let's play the guessing game and see if we make it to 20. We may, we may not. I don't know. We'll see what the weather decides to do. It does call for snow Friday night, five to 10 centimeters possibly. So that could be snow event 20, or we may not see it to next year. We'll have to wait and see. I'm just kidding. You'll definitely see me, but you may not see us in action doing snow until next season. Anyways, guys, I appreciate, love you all. Sorry for the tangent. And uh, we'll catch you on either snow event 20 or on my next video that I drop containing something else. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment below. We'll catch you on the next one. Thank you guys so much. Peace.